All right, so next we're going to go into linear functions in standard form, <clears throat> okay? And so I will write linear equations in standard form. So here um, they want us to look at the graph and get our x-intercepts, which are also known as your zeros. That's another way, okay? <clears throat> so here's one of the points. That's where our graph crosses the x-axis. This point is negative 3, 0, okay, because your y-value is 0. And then our y-intercept, so where it crosses the y-axis is going to be right here. Our y-intercept is 0, 4. Notice how in your y-intercept, your x is 0. And in your x-intercept, your y-value is 0. Okay? And so then our slope for this one, I'm going to count my rise over my run. So it goes up 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it runs 1, 2, and 3. So it'll be 4 over 3. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so then the next one here, our x-intercept, which is our zero, um, it's not a hundred percent visible, but I'm going to assume it's negative 1.5. So it's going to be, um, negative 1.5 comma zero. Okay. Cause it crosses the x at negative 1.5 and then your y value is zero. And then for our y-intercept for this one where it crosses our y-axis is right here, which is negative 3 comma 0. No, sorry, I said it backwards. 0 comma negative 3. Okay, on the y-value we have negative 3 and the other value is 0. So then I'm going to go ahead and um, count the slope. So we'll count the rise over the run. So we're going to get two points. Look, here's a point right here. <clears throat> So it goes down 1, 2, 3, and 4, and it runs 1, 2. So negative 4 over 2, which would be negative 2. Okay. <clears throat> the next one, the x-intercepts. Um, so this one, it looks like it crosses through 0, 0, which is the origin. Oops. So our x-intercept is 0, 0, 0 comma, zero, and then it also crosses through the exact same point for y-intercept, so zero, comma, zero, okay? Our slope here, when we count our rides over a run, <clears throat> here's one point, here's the other point, so it goes down one, two, three, and four, and it runs one, two, and three, so four over three, and it's going to be negative. All right, cool. So it says, today you will learn the last form of linear functions, which is called standard form. So we've done slope-intercept form, point-slope form, and now it's standard form. So there are a few things that we need to learn about it. So you can easily find the x and the y-intercepts using um, and the zero of the function, which is the x-intercept, okay? Um, you can easily graph the line by using the x and the y intercepts. And you can easily find the slope. And the formula is negative a over b. So whatever this number is being multiplied with the x. And this number right here, you do a divided by b and you take the negative or the opposite sign of it, okay? So here it says graph 2x plus 3y equals 12 and find the missing information. Okay, so here it says a, b, and c. So if we notice here, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. A, B is a number being multiplied times a Y, and then C is a number at the very end by itself. So when we compare that to this one, our A here is 2. Our B here is 3. And then our C is 12. Okay, so it says here the graph crosses the x-axis called the x-intercept, where y is 0. Substitute 0 for y and solve for x. <clears throat> so here, um, we're going to substitute 0 for y. Okay, so it'll be 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 12. And well, 3 times 0 is just 0, it means it's absolutely nothing. So here we get 2x equals 12. To solve for x, we are going to divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 6. Okay, so that means that our x-intercept is 6, 0.
Okay, so it says the x-intercept is also called the zero of the function. <clears throat> okay. Um, so our zero here is six. Okay, six comma zero. Okay. Now, um, the graph crosses the y-axis is called the y-intercept, where x is zero. So substitute zero for x and solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Instead of x, I'm going to put a zero. So two times zero plus three y equals 12. <clears throat> and so two times zero is just zero. And we're left with three y equals 12. We divide both sides by three to solve for x. These threes cancel and we get y equals 12 divided by three is four. So this is zero comma four. Our y value is four. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and graph that real quick. Um, 0, 4, that's our y-intercept. And then our x-intercept was 6, 0. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots. Well, that was kind of ugly. That was better. <laughs> and then for the slope, we're going to use negative a over b. <clears throat> and so if we notice here, our a is 2 and our b is 3. So it's going to be negative 2 over 3. Um, it says a slope can also be found from standard form. We just did this. Negative 2 over 3. <clears throat> All right, number 2. So here we have 5x minus 2y equals 10, where a is equal to so here a is equal to 5 because that's the number being multiplied with the x. b is going to be negative 2, okay, because we do have to take the sign that's in front of it. So here it's negative 2. And then c is equal to 10. So here it's going to be 10. <clears throat> So here it says find the x-intercept by substituting 0 for y and solving for x. Okay. So here, <clears throat> instead of y, I'm going to go ahead and put a 0. So negative 2 times 0 equals 10. Okay, so that ends up canceling out, and we just get 5x equals 10. We're going to divide both sides by 5. <clears throat> this cancels. x equals 10 divided by 5 is 2. <clears throat> okay, so then that means that my x-intercept is at 2 comma 0. And so that's going to be this point right here. And then it says find the y-intercept. <clears throat> so it's going to be instead of x, we're going to put a 0. So 5 times 0 minus 2y. 10. So then the 5 times 0 is just 0, so we're just left with negative 2y equals 10. And we divide both sides by negative 2. These 2's cancel, these negative cancels, so you get y equals 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So that means my y value is negative 5 and my x value is 0. So 0, negative 5 would be right here. <clears throat> okay. So then the slope is negative a over b. Okay, so negative a is 5. So negative 5 over and b is negative 2. So two negatives make a positive, which is going to make this slope 5 over 2. I'm going to go ahead and connect this. Oh. It says, what is the zero of the function? The zero of the function is 2. Okay, <clears throat> so that's our x-intercept. All right, the next one, number three. Okay, this one's a little bit different because this 8 is on the wrong side. So I'm going to have to move this 8 to the other side. <clears throat> and we do so by adding 8. And so we get negative 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. Okay which makes our a negative 2, our b 4, <coughs> and our c 
wait. Okay, and then we're going to get the x and the y intercepts. <clears throat> so to find the x intercept by substituting 0 for y and solving for x. So here, instead of negative 2x plus 4 times 0 equals 8. Okay, so that ends up canceling, you will get negative 2x equals 8. We divide both sides by negative 2. <clears throat> these 2's cancel, these 2 negatives cancel, and we get x equals negative 4. So here my x is negative 4, and my y value is 0. Okay, so negative 4, 0. And it says find the y-intercept by substituting 0 for x and solving for y. Whoops. We're going to do negative 2 times 0. Um, plus 4y equals 8. So that ends up canceling and we get 4y equals 8. And then we divide both sides by 4. <clears throat> and we get y equals 2. So 0 comma 0. Sorry, my pen is not working. 0, 2. And so then there's my point. <clears throat> Alright, um, I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots. And so there's my line. It says, what is the 0 of the function? The 0 of the function is negative 4, 0. Okay, and then the slope here, I have negative a over b. So it's going to be negative, negative 2, because a is already negative, over b, which is 4. And so two negatives end up making a positive, and 2 over 4 gives us 1 half. Okay, so finding the missing coordinates from the standard form equation. So it says... If the point x3 is on the line that gives us a line, what is the x-coordinate? <clears throat> so then all I'm going to do is just plug in 3 for y. So we have 2x plus 2 times 3 equals 8. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6. And then we just solve for x. So we've got to move over the 6 first. This cancels and we get 2x equals 2. We divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 1. <clears throat> the next one says, given the equation 2x minus 5y equals 12, decide if the point 1, 2 lies on the line. So then we're going to plug in 1 for x, because this is x, and 2 for y. So minus 5 times 2, and we're going to check, does this equal 12? Okay, we're not sure because we don't know if that point lies on the line, but we'll find out, because if it's equal to 12, then it does. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 5 times 2 is 10. Is this equal to 12? 2 minus 10 is negative 8. This does not equal 12, so no, this does not, not lie on the line. Okay, the next one says determine if the point negative 3, negative 13 is on the line. So we'll do the same thing again. <clears throat> we have 6 times negative 3 minus 3 times negative 13. Is this equal to 21? Okay, so this is my x value. This is my y value. All I did was plug it in. This is negative 18 plus 39. Is this equal to 21? Okay, we don't know. Um, so 39 plus negative 18. This does give us 21, so yes, it does lie, it lies on the line. <clears throat> okay, the next one says, if point 3.5 comma y is on the line, 2x plus y equals 10, find the y coordinate. 
So here we have 2 times 3.5 plus y equals 10. <clears throat> and so 2 times 3.5 is 7 plus y equals 10. And so we're looking for y, so I need to move the 7 to the other side. And we do so by subtracting. We get y equals 3. <clears throat> The next one, um, oh geez. it says, use the scenario below to answer the question. So it says, in a recent basketball game, Matthew made a three-point basket and a two-point basket for a total of 36 points. Okay. Use the scenario to answer the questions. Let the number two-point baskets be the independent variable. Okay. Mm, two point baskets are independent so they already tell us remember x and y went to the doctor and they needed their id so your independent is your x values so that means that here is going to be the two point basket <clears throat> and then that means that the three point baskets must be the three is going to be pretty bad point <clears throat> is going to be your y value okay so um we do know that he scored a total of 36 points but we don't know how many three pointers and how many two pointers so it says what are your unknowns um how many Many two and three pointers. It says what define your variables? So x is our two pointers and y is our three pointers. Okay, it says write the equation in standard form <clears throat> that represents the situation. Okay, so then we take two times x because our two pointers are x plus. 3 times y, because our three pointers are y's, and we know that it has to equal 36, okay? So then here it says, identify the zero of the function. So remember that the zero of the function is the x-intercept. So our x-intercept, to find that, we go ahead and plug in zero for y, and solve for x. So that cancels and we get 2x equals 36. We divide both sides by 2 and we get x equals 18. <clears throat> okay. um, so here um, it says what does a zero of the function represent in this problem? So, um, and I'm going to put it right here on the graph. That means that he had to have made 18 three pointer, I mean 18 two pointers and zero three pointers. So it means 18 two pointers and zero three pointers. Okay. And that's what we will get for <clears throat> um, 36 points. Okay. What is a rate of change and what does it represent? Um, so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and find the, oh look, what does a y-intercept represent in this equation? Name the y-intercept. I'm going to do my work right here. So my y-intercept here, <clears throat> instead of x, I'm going to put a 0 plus 3y equals 36. And so that just gives us 0 and we get 3y equals 36. And we divide both sides by 3. This cancels, and 36 divided by 3 gives us 12. So my y-intercept is 0, 12, which means he could have made 12 three-pointers <clears throat> and no two-pointers. Okay, and that would have made 36 points. I'm just going to connect this. Okay, <clears throat> it says what is the rate of change and what does it represent? So I'm going to go ahead and count the rise over the run. So this is counting by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's 12. This is 2. No, that's 1, 2, 3. All the way once we get to here is 18. 
<clears throat> we could have used the formula too, negative a over b. I don't know what I was thinking. So 12 over 18, and it's negative because it's going down. <clears throat> negative 12 over 18, which reduces to negative um, 2 over 3. <clears throat> so for every um, two-pointer, I mean three-pointers that we take away, that means that we have to add three two-pointers, okay? Because these are the three, three pointers and these are the two pointers. Um, <clears throat> it says, what does a y-intercept represent in the problem? It represents um, 12 three-pointers. It says, explain and identify whether the data is discrete or continuous. <clears throat> so I know I connected the dots with the line, but this is definitely going to be discrete, discrete, which means that I shouldn't have connected with the line because you can't make half a three-pointer or a quarter of a three-pointer. That's not possible. <clears throat> so it's definitely discrete. Um, the domain, the domain is our x value, so it's going to be anywhere between 0 and 18. So it'll be 0. Um, one, two, dot, 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 and then 18. And the reason that I'm writing it like that <clears throat> is because x such that x is an element of 0, 1, 2 because it can only be whole numbers. Okay. And then our range is going to go y such that y is an element of 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 to 12. And that's it. <clears throat> okay. The next one. So at a fall festival, hamburgers sell for $3 each, while hot dogs sell for $1.50 each. If a family has $30 to spend on food, <clears throat> define your variables. So my x, I look, there you have it here. My x is my hot hamburgers. So x is ham, I'm going to abbreviate, and my y value is hot dogs. It says write the equation in standard form. Okay, so it's going to be uh, $3 for hamburgers, so $3 times x plus how many ever hot dogs, which is going to be $1.50 times y. And this has to equal $30 because that's all they have to spend. <clears throat> so it says identify the x-intercept. So my x-intercept is going to be if my y value is 0. So it'll be 3x plus 1.5y equals 30. Oh, instead of y, we're putting a 0. Sorry. Zero. That ends up being 0, and we get 3x equals 30. Divide by 3, and x equals 10. So 0 comma 10. So what does this represent? This represents that, okay, well, maybe they only bought hamburgers and no hot dogs, and the only thing they could buy is 10, okay? It says identify the y-intercept. So we're going to do the same thing. So it's going to be 3 times 0 plus 1.5y equals 30. <clears throat> so 3 times 0 is just 0. So we get 150y equals 30. We divide by the dollar fifty and we get y equals um let me get my calculator real quick. Um thirty divided by one point five that gives us twenty. <clears throat> okay, which means if they only bought hot dogs only, they would buy twenty they could buy twenty of them for thirty bucks. Okay. And then um, it says identify four points on the table and graph the function. Okay, so say they bought one hamburger. <clears throat> okay, then if they bought one hamburger, that's going to take away two hot dogs. Okay, because one hamburger is three dollars and two hot dogs is three dollars. So 
they could only get 18 hot dogs in one hamburger. Okay, so one and 18. And then here, say they bought two hamburgers. <clears throat> that would have been $6, right? For two hamburgers. So then that means that they can only buy 16 hot dogs. Okay, so two and 16. And if they bought three hamburgers, then they can only get 14 hot dogs. So three, 14. And if they got four hamburgers, they can only get 12 hot dogs. And so on. <clears throat> so it says, if eight hamburgers are purchased, how many hot dogs can you purchase? So eight hamburgers, I'm going to keep going then. So it's like, if you notice, the rise over run is two, goes down two to the right one, two down two to the right one, down two to the right one, down two to the right one. There you go. <clears throat> so if eight hamburgers are purchased, how many hot dogs can you get? That here's eight. We can get four hot dogs. If four hamburgers are purchased, how many hot dogs can you purchase? So here's four hamburgers. That means you can get 12 hot dogs. The next one, if 12 hot dogs are purchased, how many hamburgers can you get? So 12 hot dogs. Let's see. Yep. 12 hot dogs, you would be able to purchase four. I don't know why they would do that. <clears throat> we just answered that. If six hot dogs are purchased, so I'm going to go ahead and look here. Six hot dogs are purchased. I'm going to go all the way to my graph. That means we can buy seven hamburgers. Okay. It says, rewrite the function above in slope intercept form. <clears throat> um, what is the rate of change and what does that mean? Okay, so it's going to be... 3x plus 1.5y equals 30. Okay, so to write in slope intercept form, I need to move this 3x to the other side. Oh, sorry. And we get 1.5y equals negative 3x, and the 30 is positive. Okay, then we divide both sides by 1.5. Mm -mm. This cancels. And we get, sorry, I'm going to move over. Where can I put it right here? Y equals um, negative 3 divided by 1.5 is negative 2x. And then 30 divided by 1.5 gives us 20. So that's in slope intercept form. It says, what is the rate of change and what does it represent? So our slope m is negative 2. And every time we <clears throat> um, every two hot dogs we lose, we can get, we can get one hamburger. And then the domain, the domain is going to be between 0 and 10. <clears throat> okay, so it's just going to be 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 10. Okay, whole numbers because we're not getting half a hot dog or anything like that. And for the hamburgers, I mean the hot dogs, it's going to go all the way up to 20. The height is going to go so between 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 20. And that's it. Thank you guys. Bye.